Now, I understand that you like go back many years in, mm. in the Compton, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Um, yeah. Kelly Park. Yep. Uh, Easy E, man. Yep. You use peoples with Easy E, yep. man. Um, you know, that's a beautiful thing, man. Um, I, I, I don't know how to approach this, but I, mm-hmm. I kind of want to ask you, like, what, what, what's your fondest memory of, of, of Easy, man? Because, you know, he's such an iconic figure to niggas like me and whatnot. Yeah, my fondest memory of Eric was uh, him waking up early in the morning, sitting on my steps or Gregory Tucker's steps. I'm um, waiting for us to wake up and come outside and play. My fondest, fondest memory is watching him turn backflips and somersaults off the fence and then turn around and getting lighter fluid and squirting up, squirting the gophers with it and then striking the match and watching him run around the backyard in the dark on fire. That's some shit the homies used to do, I swear to God. The homies used to do that back in the day. A lot of big homies yeah. used to do that shit. Because yeah. it used to be gophers back yeah, in the day. In the yeah, I know that's not yeah. okay, right? Yeah, I mean. No, it's not okay. It's not There's okay, but you know, okay growing up, that. growing up, you know, this is before we really started gang bang associating when ourselves. You had to make fun. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, we were young, you know, seventh grade, yeah, eighth I feel, grade. I feel, you know I feel, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It was. He wasn't easy. He was Eric. Right. You right, know what I mean? Right, right. A quiet guy. Right. Shy, but he was a jokester. Right. He know to throw them things, and he was very athletic. Right, right. He didn't have a small man complex. He had a big man's grip. Right. You understand me? Right. Uh, that was, you know. And then Eric becoming who he is today. Uh-huh. Icon. Icon. We're here Icon. because of Eric's yeah. doors he opened. Man, That's why tough. you're doing what you're doing. Hey. Because you're able to speak through this microphone and express what you want to express. Hey, you know man. what I'm saying? Hey, niggas put Compton on the map, man. Yeah. I'm eternally grateful. Yeah. You know, it made me proud of the city. Yeah. You know, I always knew Compton was like a special place when I yeah. was coming up. Mm-hmm. But it was like a nigga came through and just certified that shit for yeah. me. Like, I always knew about Dr. Dre. I used to mm-hmm. see Dr. Dre and shit, but, you know, yeah. it was. Easy came through and put that stamp on it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Coming up, we were CC Riders. It wasn't Atlantic Drive, Santana Block, Neighborhood, Southside, Lutus Park. It it wasn't none of that. It was all CC Riders. We were CC Riders. And being from and being from Compton, we'll go to LA. Where you from? We from Compton. We CC Riders. It was Compton Crips. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then um, it started making its own little ways. I remember the first time I experienced my home was in Kelly Park. Fight my home was from Atlanta Drive. Atlanta Drive gave Kelly Park, and we all live in one sector. So it was like, so y'all Kelly Park Crips. So is that y'all park or is that our park? Neighborhood like that's our park. That's everybody park. So how y'all gonna go two blocks over and bang on somebody? Right. So it was some politics there. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And and being an OG coming up in them days. It was hard for us to reaffirm to the youngsters that we were all unified. Yeah. See, Santana Block originated from Atlanta Drive. No shit, huh? Yeah, because everybody hung on Atlanta Drive. Okay, okay. Kim Tate, Strawberry, Robert Franklin, them. See, mm-hmm. I go way back. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. When they moved, when they started hanging over there behind right now is Domino's Pizza. Okay. On Long Beach and Alondra. Yeah. It used yeah. to be Pup and Taco back in the day. Okay. 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 They lived on that street right there. Uh-huh. So they started their own little clique. We was, there was red rags and blue rags. We started this black rag movement, the black bandanas. Okay. And we stopped gang banging and started hustling. We started turning to hustlers. Okay. So we didn't know they took that to when they moved to Santa Fe uh-huh. and started throwing that rag out at Santana Block Crips. Wow. So we over here on our side throwing it up at Dominguez as hustlers. Right. And now we're getting in conflict with the Bloods because we didn't know the Santanas had started a gang. So Stanley Pitts, Marcus Nunn, Ricky Prude on them. Ricky Prude on I'm an OG. God damn. Stutterbox. 
what? What? They had to let us know that somebody was using that flag, you know. So as hustlers, we had to put that flag up because we wasn't representing Santana Block. Right, right. And then that's how all this stuff started. Fucking A, bro. But Bobby being a Dominguez High School graduate. (laughs) Uh huh. Put that out Very there. Very few, and baby. The yeah, he's got going. hot. Uh huh. <laughs> Easy showed me a big brick coke. Like, what is that? <laughs> I went to the army. Is that right? Nice. Fuck. Ah. Okay. That was too much. What is that? Because we were just, you know, two finger nickel bag of weed. Right. Commercial. Right. right. And then we started seeing Colombo and Acapulco Gold. What is that? You know what I mean? We were cool with that. Then a little angel dust, but then when that came into play, <laughs> what is that? You yeah. dealing with the feds? Yeah. Our husband days over. I was in the army. I was. I had my certificate. I was. I'm ready. So I left for like four years. I didn't know Easy E was Easy E until I was at uh in New Jersey. I was stationed at Fort Dix in New Jersey, and it was a concert, like a Fresh Fest, uh-huh. in Philadelphia at the Spectrum. Right. So by me being in the army, I was like, I'm gonna go see this concert with. With um, L. Cool J, Biz Marquee, um, Cool Mo D, you know, all in East Coast artists, because right. I was on, that's all I heard. Right, right. Only thing I remember from LA was uh, LA Dream Team, Rock Berry. Yeah. Rock Berry. Yeah, yeah, Rock I remember Berry. that. I thought that was cool. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. And then uh, I had the nosebleed seats, and I remember hearing, Straight out the streets of Compton. I'm like, I'm like what, what the fuck? What, the, what is that? <laughs> Let me, okay. I have to know what that is. Straight out of Compton, niggas with that. What? <laughs> I, I was in no, so I still didn't see who was these people. So I immediately went to a payphone inside the spectrum. Call home. Call around the corner. I called my house. Larry, <laughs> it was Blue Rack from the Banging on White, my little brother. Okay. What, Larry, what, what's this? NWA, oh man, it's easy. Who is easy? Eric, Eric, Eric Wright? Yeah, he's easy now, you mean that? What? Hang up the phone. And I made a V line run straight to the stage. From the nose bleed, <laughs> the red car. Unstopped, stop wasn't me. being stopped. No denying, like, I'm a, them is my, that's my homie. Eric, nigga, Was Eric, that like say. excitement? Like, huh? Was that like excitement? Like it we was made a it? Was Russian that like, like? Oh my God! Why did you I tell had me? Two or? years left in the army, so it was kind of rough. <laughs> 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 but it excited me because as I got closer, I seen Ren yelling, Dre. I'm like, nigga, what? Like, what? I didn't People know you grew Q. up with. Yeah. yeah, I didn't know Q. Yeah, like, but nice. Eric was what? doing. Uh, they was doing. We want easy. And I remember him. I was getting his attention. People trying to pull me back, and he looked down. So, oh, he cool over there. So they let me go to the side of the stage. That's why I seen my homie Big Man, who should be with Eric. And I didn't know John and Jacob the twins. I didn't know who they were, but they said Eric. He just said stay right here. Mm-hmm. So after he came off stage, he said, "What you doing out here, Arnold?" You know my name, Arnold. Yeah. <laughs> what you doing out here, Arnold? Man, I'm in the army, like army. He said, I'm Easy E now, man. I got a rap group. I'm Easy E now. Yeah. <laughs> give, me nice. a, give me a number, Eric. He gave me his business card. And I kept that business card in my wallet next to my military ID for the last, the next two years of my career. And that's the first thing I did was call Eric when I came home. I got my honorable discharge. Got home. That's the first thing I did. I got to my grandma's house. Just called that number. Can I speak to Eric, please? The room is record. I speak to Eric, please. Who's calling? Arnold White, hold on, please. Is this business or personal? Uh, personal. <laughs> What's up, Arn? What's happening? That's a good look, man. You ain't confident? Yeah. I'm in Woodland Hills, man. Woodland Come out here. You know what I mean? Yeah. He said, when you, can you get out here? I said, man, tomorrow. All right. Come out here. Here's the address. Write it down. Come out here tomorrow, man, like 12. All right. So I borrowed one of my homeboys who had a, a 1979 Ford Mustang. What color? Blue. <laughs> it needed steering column, so you had to, yeah, you yeah, had to keep it like that, yeah. you know, go straight, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I, I, didn't, I never knew about Willing Hill. He just said, take the 710 to the one-on-one, just keep going. Uh-huh. And, uh, I got there, man. I pulled up, and uh, I wasn't embarrassed. I just got home, but I pulled up. 
And I remember parking next to his car, and it was car was 600 big body, Ben, silver, nickel silver. And I went to the door, I'm here to see Eric, hold on. Come on in, And that's when he gave me the whole story about everything. You know, we broke up in WA, um, what Dre did, you know, everything. everything. Now, at what point, what year was that about? What was that? This was like... Oh, when I got back, I got home in like 89. I was still seeing 89. You know what I mean? It was just, it was just turmoil had just started. Right. Yeah. They had dropped the niggas for life already. Yeah, he had, and he was working on his EP because he never got the album. He just didn't see it. So he's working on two records with Straight Outta Compton, Straight Outta Compton, Straight Outta Compton One, and Straight Outta Compton Two. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. All right, man. Like, I. I know it's like hell of a memories, man. For yeah. you, man. Like, but like the last time you seen the conversation, last conversation. The last conversation he gave me so much game. You see, Eric, we were all because of our gifts. See, we all had gifts, okay. talents, right? And we worked off of that. Uh-huh. We, we we knew what it was. We didn't have to pound you across the head to get the point across. Right, right. So, and we were futurists. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah, Dre's a futurist. Okay. That's why you see what's going on. Easy with the futurists. Okay. He had the Black Eyed Peas sign when he Yeah, I remember that. There was the at band clan yeah, back right. then. And I yeah, keep telling yeah. niggas about that shit. Motherfuckers yeah. don't want to hear me. <laughs> I'll be telling you about Abraham. that. Yeah. He had group sign. Yeah. He was a and, futurist. Yeah. You know what I mean? And Dre shook him, studied his way of thinking. You uh-huh. know what I mean? And Dre's a futurist too. That's why you see things evolving in the business. Now, G Unit is actually. NWA. Dre designed that that blueprint. Right. He gave the NWA blueprint to 50. Right, right, right. But my last conversation was um, at the Real Comic City G's video shoot. Okay. Um, where he came to Compton. Right. And he right. needed that pass. I remember that. And we gave him that pass. You know, it was a lot of little homies that didn't know nothing about it, they just heard of him. Yeah. They were like, fuck easy, yeah, okay. But y'all gonna stand down on this one. Right, 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 right. And then he did the righteous thing by getting because what Eric was doing, he played off of us. But when Eric was doing that and going through the problems of that, we did the Tweety Bird Loke album, which was dissing Eric, and that took that money and did the Bang and Wax Bloods and Crips project. Okay, yeah. So Simlo Blue Rag them is my family. Okay. My little brothers, okay. And my cousin. So when we did that, we blew everything out out of the water on Eric Hat. On the box. Okay. The box was I cracking. remember that. I remember that back then. Yeah, yeah, so. Bang that, and Wax just yeah, was in yeah, continuous rotation. Yeah, yeah, it was continuous. And that was no marketing, no, no nothing. That was just real people punching them buttons. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. There was no marketing dollars behind that project. It was a natural thing that happened. Yeah. So what Eric did, he was proud that we represented Compton. Yeah. Because every artist that was on the first bang was from Compton. Right. I remember you that. You know what I mean? Then yeah. we shot the one video, Banging on Wax, in L.A. under the bridge, but the Steady Dipping was shot in Compton and Kelly Park. Yeah. So all Eric knew was that we got into the business. You know what I mean? Without right. him. Right, right. And he looked at that like, but we had big homeboys I was pushing up on like, man, what you gonna do with Larry D. John? He said, well, I need to do niggas just blowing me out the water. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. But basically, he knew it was bad contracts. Right. You know what I mean? That was done. But he did reach out to us, like do the um, Dominic the Prima. He did a show, um, he did the Roots Radio show. But then when Dominic the Prima had her thing on Sunday, he wanted to do the gangster rap show. He wanted to show the difference between gangster rappers and rap gangsters. Okay. You know what I mean? All right. The studio gangsters are real gang bang rappers. Why? Right. So he wanted to do that. So we set that up to where we went in there and did that program. Um, and it was successful. But to tell you, Exactly what he told me at our last meet, our last conversation was, and actually some of it is on video. Um, I did a documentary on Eric, um, uh-huh. the last days of Easy. Okay. Um, it's on the internet. You know, somebody uploaded it, and I let it go, just let everybody see the footage. But I'm talking to Eric. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? I'm asking some questions, and he's like, "I know how you think, Arm. What are you asking me that for? You know what I mean? Right, right. But basically, we was talking, not in code." But he was always a person that think he was out to get him. 
For sure. Like, like Eric, I'm filming. He let me film all the behind the scenes. Right. People were like, man, you man, get off me, man. Eric, right. he cool, homie. He cool. Let him get, do whatever he want to do. Right, right. So I got the pass to the videotaping store. Eric, let me get an interview. What's up, Arn? What we going to do? I said, we're going to take it back. He said, where you taking it to? He thought I was talking about the footage. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Where you taking it to? You know what I mean? I said, we can take it to the universe. So we was already up there. Now we're in the universe. You know what I'm saying? Because mm-hmm. see, back then, nobody knew about digital. Right. And it was going to be digital downloads. It was all albums and physical distribution. Right. So I said, we're going to take it to the university. And he started laughing. So when the cameras were off, he was like, man, get a record shop. Mm-hmm. Get a record shop. Because me and Michael Bivens starting this company, this first on black owned manufacturing distribution company. I said, what is that? He said, well, we signed the acts. Michael Bivens got the East Coast. I got the West. We signed the groups. We have our, our distribution company outside of our label, and we're going to distribute it to the major key players like the Warehouse Records, uh, Sam Goody, FYE. So we're going to, that's how we're going to get to $67. Uh-huh. He said, my record right now, um, my NWA record, I get 68 cents. I'm one of the highest paid artists in the industry. What do you mean? Because I get 68 cents a record. I said, you get 60. He said, Michael Jackson get a dollar. I'm like, what? That's crazy, man. <laughs> That shit seemed crazy. Hey, huh? I took that game 